after a year of following the same weekly workout routine, I have completely transformed my physique. And so today, not only am I going to be walking you guys through this whole routine in depth, I'm also going to be giving you the tips and tricks I wish I knew to help you get the most out of your workouts and see the most growth possible. On day one, we're starting out with my first lower body workout of the week, and that is quads. I absolutely love doing quads on my first day because it honestly makes every other day feel so much easier. And usually at the start of the week, I have the most energy to work out in comparison to every other day so I like hitting the hardest workout first. Okay so first up we have calves and I know a gym girl that doesn't skip calves practically unheard of but I love doing calves at the start of my workout because they're one of my weaker points and by doing it at the start I make sure I have the most energy possible push as hard as possible on this exercise in order to see the most growth. After frying my little calves with four sets of those we're on to the meat and gravy of this workout and we're starting off strong here with a smith machine squat but before we actually get into squatting I like to just quickly do some dynamic stretching to warm up all my joints and help me go deeper in the exercise and prevent myself from popping a hip before I turn 22. And my leg day warm up is honestly so simple. I just do some leg swings, some body weight RDLs to get my hips and glutes nice and warm. And then when I feel like I've done enough of those, I'll go straight into warming up my squats. Now recently, I just started doing my squats on the Smith machine instead of using the barbell. And let me tell you, it's a game changer. Barbell squats used to give me so much knee pain because yes, I do actually have the knees of a 50 year old man. Hence why I also wear my knee sleeves. But with Smith machine squats, I feel like I have more stability and when I'm able to control the movement better I feel less stress on my joints and I'm able to push so much harder during my sets overall and before I put any weight on the bar I like to do just a few sets first just to warm up and then I will slowly work up to my working weight and honestly the main thing I focus on while squatting is bracing my core this is so important to protect your back and help keep good form during the entire movement and to brace all you're gonna do is take a deep breath in fill your belly with air and thinking about tightening your abs as if you're about to be punched in the gut and you're gonna want to maintain this tightness and hold your breath during the entire squat and exhale only once you've completed the movement. Another reason why I really like squatting on the Smith machine is I feel like I can go to complete failure without being scared of snapping myself in half like I would while barbell squatting. <laughs> Next up we have the infamous Bulgarian split squat. I like doing these on the Smith machine over using dumbbells for the same reason as squats. I get more stability meaning I can push to absolute failure while making sure I'm targeting my quads as much as humanly possible. Now I'll do three sets of 10 to 12 reps of these and to make them quad focused over glute focused make sure Sure you keep your working legs foot close to the bench or whatever you're using to rest your non-working leg on and your torso as upright as possible to drive that front leg forward more and stretch out those quads. After three sets of those my quads are absolutely fried so I like to take a little rest before I keep going and I work on my hamstrings. So here I'm just doing lying leg curls and if you guys follow me on TikTok you'll know I used to be an avid hater of this exercise but the more I do it the more I get the hang of it and the more I started to love it because it just targets the hamstrings so well. I'll do four sets of 10 to 12 reps of these and I'll push to absolute mechanical failure on each set. To really make sure you're targeting your hamstrings on this one, make sure you really control the way down of this movement. We really want to get the most time under tension for our hamstrings as humanly possible here. Okay, now back to quads. It wouldn't be a quad workout without these bad boys. We're doing leg extensions next. Now buckle up for this one, ladies, because we're doing seven sets in total. But before you panic, let me break it down for you. For our first two sets, we're going to pick a weight we can do pretty comfortably just to warm up, going three or four reps from failure. After that, we're going to pick a heavy weight for our working set that we can do for around 10 to 12 reps and go until absolute failure. And then for our fifth to seventh set, we're gonna be doing a drop set, basically dropping the weight for each set and going to failure within the 10 to 20 rep range. Now, after that, I am absolutely toasted, but we still have one more exercise. Bestie, I did warn you this workout is brutal. We're gonna be doing three sets of leg press to finish off this workout. And for my first set, I'll do a top set. And then for my last two sets, I'll do a drop set. I like to keep my first set within the 10 to 12 rep range. And then my second to third set in the 12 to 15 rep range. Make sure you're going nice and deep with your leg press because getting the most stretch and tension as possible on those quads is what's going to make them grow. We don't want to see no half reps around here. No ma'am. Oh bestie you thought it was over. Recently I've loved finishing my quads with sissy squats which is basically like a standing psychotic version of the leg extension. I'll do two sets of these to complete failure and of course it wouldn't be a workout with me if we didn't do a little bit of posing at the end. I mean the quad pump from this routine is absolutely crazy girlies. Rest up bestie because we've got a killer workout tomorrow. Rise and shine besties. It's chest day. Now I used to be a chest day hater but recently I've really enjoyed having a chest focus day in my routine. I feel like I used to neglect chest because I was so scared I was going to grow pecs and my C cups were going to become double A cups but then I realized I don't care and I love feeling strong under a barbell so here we are. <laughs> but before I do any chest work I like doing a bit of a warm-up. I love using resistance bands to warm up my upper body on chest day. I honestly just wing up my warm-ups and do some round the world type stretches and try and warm up my shoulders as much as possible. Okay so on to our first exercise we have the incline chest press. I would 
be lying if I told you I was feeling it this day. I was not. First, I had the two tens on the bar and honestly, they felt like twenties. I did my first set with this weight and then decided to drop the weight. I just respect the fact I felt weaker today. This is gonna be a running theme this week because my period is due, ladies, and if you know, you know. Anyway, so I dropped the weight down here for my last two sets and it felt so much better. After I finished that, I moved into my first shoulder exercise of the day and that is seated shoulder press. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I do have a love-hate relationship with this exercise. Some days I love it, some days I can barely lift the dumbbells over my head without shedding a tear. Also, does anyone else have an irrational fear that the bench is just gonna collapse on them and have to literally triple check it's slotted in right, or is that just me? <laughs> anyway, I warmed up here with the tens for a set before going into the fifteens for three sets of ten to twelve reps. I swear upper body is just me flexing for ninety percent of my workout. I started the gym to start growing my glutes. How have I ended up here? And to feel these as much as possible in my shoulders, I like to keep the eccentric as slow as possible and really explode on the way back up, keeping my shoulders under tension for as long as I can until I go until failure. Once we've gotten through those, we're now moving on to the shoulder superset bestie. And we basically have three exercises here that we're gonna be doing back to back for four sets. First up, we have rear delt flies. And for these, all you're gonna wanna do is bend over and raise the dumbbells up and come back down. And after we've gone to failure on those, we're gonna go into dumbbell front raises. And as the name suggests, all you're gonna do is raise the dumbbells up in front of you and then come back down, up and down. And for all three of these exercises, we're taking no rest in between until we finish the third exercise, which is side lateral raises. Now, let me just tell you, your shoulders are gonna be on fire. So pick a manageable weight you know you'll be able to do on each for around 10 to 15 reps and go to failure. And once you've done all three exercises back to back, take a break and then repeat three more times. And I would recommend resting for at least a few minutes in between each set just to make sure you have enough energy to push as hard as possible on your next set. Let me just tell you, Bestie, after four sets of these, the shoulder pump goes absolutely crazy. So after we've absolutely toasted our shoulders, we're going to be moving back to chest and we're doing bench. Recently, I've been loving doing bench with the barbell over dumbbells, but you could do this with dumbbells if you prefer. So I started off here as usual by just warming up with the bar before going into one top set and two back off sets. I was honestly fighting for my life during this exercise. Note self, always have a spotter on standby when doing bench. <laughs> now onto our next chest exercise, we're gonna be doing some cable flies. I love doing my flies on the cable because I feel like it can really stretch your chest and put as much tension on your testicles as possible. And to do these, all you're gonna do is set the cables so they're just above your head height and step forward, keeping one leg in front of the other for more stability. Think about it like training to get better at cuddles because it's like a curved hugging motion that we're gonna be doing here. And after doing three sets of those, I moved on to some dips. Now, these are hard. I remember I tried doing them with body weight before and could only do about six reps, so decided to start doing them banded until I got a bit stronger with it. This exercise honestly gives major gym bro vibes and I'm not mad about it. Now, I'll do around three sets of eight to 10 reps of these before moving on to our last exercise, which is abs. Hanging leg raises are definitely one of my favorite ab exercises of all time. The key to feeling these in your abs and not your hips is to round your back and think about crunching your legs up from your abs. Don't just swing up from your hips. There are around four sets of 10 to 12 reps of these and let me just tell you my abs are toasted after it. And that is all we have for today. I will see you tomorrow for our next lower day. Hello, hello. We're now on to day three of our week of workouts, which is also our second lower body day of the week and that is glutes and hamstrings. I used to do glutes and quads on the same day, but I found that separating the two helped me really give as much energy as humanly possible to both muscle groups and get the most out of each workout. So just like my quad day, I started out here with calves on the leg press, which I did again for four sets of 15 to 20 reps. Now, I used to actually do my calf raises on the Smith machine, shock horror, but I came to the realization that my hips were limiting how hard I could push during the movement. So I switched over to the leg press for a bit more stability. And can I just say the stretch you get on the leg press is chef's kiss. Okay, so moving on to our first school exercise, we have hip thrusts. And if you've been here for a while, you know that I'm actually a Smith machine hip thrust lover. But I've been doing them with the barbell recently and I found that I can get a much better squeeze at the top of the movement and load my glutes much better. But before we start, I like to just do a little bit of dynamic stretching again to get my hips nice and warm. So first I do this little squat number, really just focus on trying to warm up my hip joints as much as possible. Now this is gonna be a tough exercise, so strap in. We're doing seven sets again. For our first two sets, we're just gonna be focused on warming up. So picking a weight you can do comfortably, not to failure for around 12 or so reps. And for our third and fourth set, we're gonna be doing top sets. So pick a weight here you can do for around 10 to 12 reps going to absolute failure. Now the key to hip thrusting for glute growth is to go as slow as possible and hold the movement for a few seconds at the very top. Keeping time under tension is one of the many ways to progressively overload on an exercise and get the most growth out of that exercise as possible. And after those two sets, we're moving on to our fifth to seventh sets, which are gonna be drop sets. So for each set, we're gonna be doing as many reps as possible or AMRAP and going to absolute failure and then dropping the weight and going again. Now, if you're not dead from those sets alone, you will be after having to unrack the weight each time. I am so sorry, bestie. <laughs> and once we've severely toasted our buns with this one, we're gonna give our glutes 
a bit of a rest and go on to hamstrings. And for hammies, we're gonna be doing seated hamstring curls. Now, I actually do much prefer these over lying leg curls because I feel like I can push myself to failure and keep better form compared to a lying leg curl. And I'm sorry to say it, but we're doing seven sets of these too. I know, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but basically we're gonna be doing it the same way as we did for hip thrusts, but with three warm-up sets, one top set, and for our fifth, sixth, and seventh set, we're gonna be doing drop sets until failure. When I first started lifting, I would be lying if I told you I trained hamstrings. I honestly thought it was so optional and I would just never need to train them, but please believe me, if I could go back in time, I would definitely hit myself and drag myself on over to the hamstring machine and hit some hamstrings. Ever since I added these into my routine, I've noticed some crazy gains in my hamstrings and I am loving it. Okay, so after you're struggling to walk from that one, we're gonna move back onto glutes. And of course, we're doing the Romanian deadlift. Now, this exercise is super tricky to get right, but can give you the most insane stretch when done properly, so I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to do like, it. Let's start with my feet around hip width apart and have my hands on the bar just outside where my legs are and have a slight bend in my knee throughout the whole movement. Now, these are a hip hinge movement, meaning we're gonna start by pushing our hips back, not by going forward or down from our front. A cue that has really helped me get my form down is think about pushing your bum back and up to the ceiling at the same time. We'll take a bit of trial and error to get this one right, but I promise you it's worth it. Next up, we're gonna be going back to the Smith machine for the reverse lunge. Now, for these, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be doing one and one quarter rep lunges. Basically, all that means is we're gonna go down once, come back up, and then go down for another quarter rep, and that all counts as one whole rep. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, these are not for the faint-hearted, and your booty cheeks are gonna be absolutely destroyed after it. Want to make sure you're doing these slow and controlled and really get a deep stretch on those glutes. And we're gonna be doing these for three sets of eight to 10 reps. And finally, we're gonna drag ourselves over to the cable machines and do our last glute exercise, which is the glute medius kickback. These are honestly such a good exercise for giving your glutes that Kim K shelf look. All you're gonna do is set the cable machine to the last or second last rung and attach yourself to it from an ankle cuff. I got mine super cheap from Amazon and I'll pop a link for it down below. Then all you're gonna do is kick your working leg back at around 45 degrees and squeeze your glutes at the top before coming down. Honestly, after this glute day, I am absolutely beat and it's just in time for our first rest day of the week. So I'll see you on Saturday for our next workout. Happy Saturday, besties. I always feel so good coming back to the gym after my rest day. I think a lot of people, especially beginners, undervalue how important rest days actually are for your body. Because your muscles don't grow during your workout, but in the time that you are resting. So if you're working out seven days a week, take this as your sign to add at least one rest day into the mix. Now, today we're gonna be doing back and arms. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love training back. I used to hate it, but the more I did it, the more I love the feeling of the t-shirt splitting back pump I get. And bestie, when I saw my first ever bicep vein, I nearly imploded from excitement. Okay, so our first back exercise, we're gonna be doing the bent over rows. I do these with an overhand grip, but you can also do them underhand. The only difference between the two is that the overhand grip targets the upper back muscles more, while the underhand barbell roll targets the lower back and the lats more. So it really depends what you want to focus more the on. The key to getting the most out of this movement is really stretching out at the bottom, which is gonna allow us to increase our time under tension and really push ourselves to failure. Now moving on to our next back exercise, we have the chest supported row. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I was not feeling the vibes on this one today. And sometimes you just get that with exercises for no reason. Like I swear to God, last week I was getting crazy contractions and a great back pump with this, but this week my body was like, mm, no, we hate this. Mm, never do this again. But I powered through and got it done to the best of my capability. And I did three sets of 10 to 12 reps of this one, really focusing on stretching my back out at the bottom of the movement and squeezing my back when I pulled the bars back into my body. I also love using lifting straps on my back days because they take your grip out of the equation of being the limiting factor and help you get those last one or two reps on your movements. I have tried so many different straps, but recently I got these from Gymshark and they're honestly the best ones I've used, so I'll link them below for you guys. Next up, we have the ultimate ego boosting exercise and that is the chin up. For anyone with the goal of getting their first pull up this year, I recommend starting with a band to get used to the movement and also just get stronger on your back exercises like rows and then you'll be strong enough to pull your own body weight. You can also do drills like dead hangs, deficit pull-ups, or scapular shrugs to help you get there quicker, but I can do a full vid on how to get your first pull-up. Just let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested in that. And now on to our final back exercise of the day. We have another row variation, but this time it's the medals row. This is a unilateral exercise, which is great to include in any workout to sort out any muscle imbalances and prevent one side of our back being significantly bigger and stronger than the other. The medals row is basically just a modified version of the single arm row, but using a bar instead of dumbbells. I honestly really, really like these just for how stable I feel and how much of a stretch I can feel in my back during the entire exercise. Okay, now that we're done with back, we're moving on to shoulders. I have a serious goal of growing my shoulders in this split, so I like to include one exercise in my back day to up the frequency I hit them during the week. So today we're doing cable side laterals, and I like to use my ankle cuff again as an attachment for these because it takes my grip out of it and helps me focus solely on my shoulders. And we're going to be doing seven sets of these, so two warm up sets, two top sets, and three drop sets all to failure. I like to keep this one slow and controlled so I can really put all that focus on my shoulders during the entire movement. Also, you won't need a lot of weight for these because they're 
ridiculously humbling. I struggle with the 10 pound weights on these, I swear. And last, but by no means least, we are doing arms, baby. For arms, I like to superset my bicep and tricep exercise. And for biceps, we're doing the easy bar curls and triceps, we're doing the single arm push. I like doing my push down single arm over using a rope because I feel like I can target my triceps so much more effectively and focus on really squeezing my muscle. I'll do four sets of these, both for around 10 to 12 reps. Also, can we just take a second to appreciate this lighting because it's making my arms look so jacked. I love bicep curls so much. I go into full gym bro mode, I swear. But after we finish this superset, that is us done for today. So I'll see you tomorrow for day five. Good morning, all. Today is our last workout of the week and this workout is short and sweet, but very effective. Today is our third lower body day of the week and we're hitting quads, glutes, and hamstrings. For our first exercise of the day, we have glutes and we're gonna be doing the single leg leg press. Now, this exercise is not for the faint hearted. She is absolutely brutal. It's kind of like doing a Bulgarian split squat, but much worse. So first I like to do a little warm up with no weight before moving into some dynamic stretches. And after opening my hips up a bit, I'll slap my weight on, which is literally 10 kilos, but trust me, these are hard. I like to go as slow as I can and really stretch out those glutes, making sure to keep my foot high up on the platform to target my glutes over my quads. I'll do three sets of 12 to 15 reps for these. And let me tell you, the buns are always fired after it. They're definitely one of my favorite glute exercises. And for our second glute exercise of the day, we have Smith Machine hip thrusts. I mentioned earlier on in the week that I am an avid lover of these and I did not lie. If you've never tried them before, you need to try them. Doing hip thrusts on the Smith Machine is great if you really want to control the movement and put as much tension on your glutes as possible. I like also to put a plate under my feet on this exercise to increase my range of motion and get a bit more out of this exercise. Okay, now moving on from glutes, we have our first quad exercise and of course it's the leg extension. Because we haven't worked out our quads yet today, I feel like I can go heavier and harder on these so I really try and push myself as much as possible. I like also to hold these at the top for a few seconds to really get that burn going in my quads. And I'll do three sets of 12 to 15 reps of these before going into my hamstring exercise, which coincidentally happens to be on the same machine. And that is, of course, the seated hamstring curl. Now again, I'll do three sets of 12 to 15 on these, really focusing on squeezing that muscle and slowing down to keep as much tension on those hamstrings as possible. Now girls, this split has literally changed the game for me when it comes to my legs. I have noticed recently that I've almost tripled my leg size since I first started lifting, and it's thanks to training legs three times a week. Now don't get me wrong, it's tiring at first, but if you manage your recovery properly by eating enough food, taking your rest days and sleeping around eight to nine hours every single night, three leg days a week will have your legs blowing up in a matter of months. Now we're moving on to our last leg exercise of the day and that is goblet squats. Now these are absolutely amazing for burning out the quads and I love using them as a finisher in my leg days. I like to elevate my goblet squats using a bumper plate so I can really get extra deep and stretch out my quads as much as possible. For my final exercise, we have abs. Now this is the one ab exercise I've kept in my routine for the entire time I've been lifting and that is V-ups. They're kind of like the hanging leg raise from before, but on the ground. The one thing I really like about them is that you can load them with weight, which makes it so much easier to track progressive overload. Really hope this video helped give you guys some inspiration for your next workout or helped you with a few tips and tricks on how to get the most out of each exercise. Leave a comment down below on what you'd like to see next from me and hopefully I'll catch you in my next one.